of wage employees can get by. Ten billion dollars a year. Okay, and the last one is also McDonald's. Last year, McDonald's tripled the pay of its new CEO from $4.1 million a year to $13.8 million a year, but raising workers' pay to $15 an hour would be a problem. This is called, I call this, Mick Bullshit. Mick this is, Bullshit. But this is America. This is America, like I said, way back when, 30 some years ago, where the uh, all, it was deliberate choices made. Uh huh that all benefits deriving from uh, profits and government etc. shall be directed to those on the top of the economic ladder. Right. With deliberate choices, my friend. Hmm. Okay? Now it is time... Um, well, they did... They, they, they've been having walkouts and strikes, uh, the McDonald's Yeah, employees. Walmart is the same thing. You know what would be really lovely? Yeah, they want fourteen dollars an hour instead of seven. You know, it'd be nice if uh, they should be getting twenty-two. If fast food restaurants, considering how much money the McDonald's is raking in, if fast food restaurants, as well as retail, unionize, wouldn't that be a lovely dream? Can't come true. Well, yeah. Well, that would boost the pay. <laughs> That's why McDonald's and Walmart and etc. don't want no stinking unions. And then they and then the they'll com states. and then they'll complain and say, "Oh, we have to raise our prices." No, no you don't. don't. You make enough money. You make enough money to pay a decent living wage to your employers. You don't have to raise prices on customers. In the old days, <coughs> when profits went up, wages went up. In the new days, when profits go up, wages go down, and yeah. CEOs get paid more. Sounds like siphoning up all the money to the top to me. That's it. Well, they're the job producers, aren't they? The job the producers. The job creators. Yeah, in, in China. Yeah. In Bangladesh. Well, they're being honest when they say that. And, and, and oh, by the way... The same, the, saying where that happened. I, 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 might, I don't know if I mentioned this last Saturday, but um, uh, I had a discussion with a, uh, a Philippine person living in the Philippines that told me that the wonderful American companies, the wonderful American corporations who have outsourced office jobs, inbound call centers, whatever you want to call them, customer service jobs to the Philippines, I thought they were paying them a lousy, that. despicable one dollar an hour. Yeah. Oh no, they're paying them 50 cents an hour for the same office job in the United States that pay like anywhere from eleven to fourteen dollars an hour with benefits of course in the Philippines these people are just getting a lousy fifty cents an hour that's it for doing the same job in the office that now, they did in the United now States. Guess what? What? With proper regulation the corporations could not do that. With but proper we, regulation. But are we doing that? Under a progressive Liberal. You don't even have to be progressive. All you have to be is right and moral. Well, um, Dwight Eisenhower did, didn't wouldn't approve of all this, and he was a Republican. Those days are gone. He was a moderate. Those Republicans are gone. You know, if you're a, mo a moderate or progressive, you would believe in regulation because if you don't regulate companies, they turn wicked. They take they take over. It's well, simple. Take over. They take over because they, they can. can. They can. The more power you grant to somebody, the but bigger they listen. become, and the more powerful they become. They have offshore mailboxes. They have outsourced your jobs because they can. They have Swiss bank accounts because they can. Yeah, not bringing the money back here to be taxed. No. And how do they can? Because the politicians let them. And why do the politicians let them? Because they they fund their campaigns and they give them money under the table yeah. they pay and them we off. don't call it what it really is bribery not campaign contributions it's bribery it's all bribery it's all corrupt crooked it's like why the SEC did not know 
about crookedness during the financial meltdown they sort of lacked the ability to tell what was bad and what was good. And of course the bad banksters and uh, Wall Street and Goldman Sachs, nobody saw the inside of a jail cell. <laughs> but if you protest against uh, the same people that are, that are criminals, you got arrested for protesting. Well, today you get arrested on, you know, with the NADA, you are a terrorist. Okay. Yeah, you're you're labeled as a terrorist if yeah, you're if you you're see. a good person that wants to do good in the world. You see with Bradley Manning and, and Edward Snowden, when you're a whistleblower, you're a terrorist. I think whistleblowers are heroes. Of course they are. In reality, right? Yeah. Okay, let us sink our teeth into these readings for this week's uh, Labor Day weekend, 2013, progressive discussions. This is a reference to a letter concerning homeless shelter. Okay. The article states police have been stopping and questioning people in the city who appear homeless. What exactly do homeless people appear like? Because the ones I know are clean cut and nicely dressed. The article also states some homeless people said they felt harassed. When did homelessness become a crime? Especially when it's not their fault that they're in that situation. Well, according to the teabaggers, it is their fault. Yeah, I know, I know. Where's the probable cause to suspect a person of committing a crime before police stop them? This is the same thing as stop and frisk in New York City, which has brought about a lot of criticism. Here in Hackensack, New Jersey, it's profiling. It's a violation of civil and constitutional rights. Even homeless people have rights and deserve dignity and respect. Well, they're, they're American citizens. I, I assume most of them are. They're 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 homeless, and uh, there's a good chance that they're American citizens. So therefore, they have the same rights as anyone else. They just happen to be broke. Yeah. And why? Why are they broke? Because because the uh, the the uh, the one percent or the top twenty percent are hogging all all the money and 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 wealth of the nation because we have we have granted to, to the corporations and businesses uh, the, the right to provide us with jobs so that we can actually survive. You mean like other countries do keep the jobs within in their country? Well we don't do that. That's my point. Mm -mm. The point I'm trying to make is it is a bad thing that we have done. Jobs should not be given to, provided by corporations and businesses. No. Okay, we should not be groveling to them for a job to survive. You know what's funny? They, the, the conservatives, of course they lie all the time, but they, they tell people that, uh, they give them the idea that only a privatized job and not a government Pay job mm. can can do the job right. The only pri privatization well, that's how they is superior their, yes. to the government doing something, providing a service, which is a lie. That well, hey, a job is a job. It's a job. Okay. The point is that goes along with their wanting to make the government smaller. Okay, that's what that's all about. They, I think they, well, they, they want They don't to, want the government to provide jobs, just like the cities and the counties. They don't want them to provide jobs either. Bye-bye, teachers, fire me, police. So they want, they want to shrink the government down to nothing because the corporations are paying them to do this. Alec, Alec writes the laws. 
and hands it to the congressman with a generous campaign contribution. This okay. is how we want you to vote. They don't want to shrink the government down to nothing. They just want to keep the military. That's correct. So they can steal other countries' oil. And, 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 and well, the, they either we don't know about it, or they fail and the in poor, Iraq. And these poor kids that join the military, they don't realize that they're being lied to. That whole they're fighting for first freedom. Freedom, yeah. They're fighting them over there, so they won't come over here. Yeah, and also um, demonizing anything that is not capitalism, that is not the, any any form of socialism is is wicked. They're, they're told these lies. Even God's economics is wicked compared to capitalism. God's economics is wicked. So the devil's economics is good. This is all coming from conservatives. Yeah, uh, you know, your Rush Limbaugh's with the big fat cigar sticking out of their mouth. They, uh, everything's about money, profit, profit. Hey, keep on denying uh, global warming, climate change. Keep on denying Fukushima leaking 300 tons, did I say? 300 tons of contaminated radioactive material into the sea. Oh, the earth will, will dilute everything and everything will disappear. Oh, yeah, in tens of thousands of years, whatever the half-life is to that particular radi radio product that you're talking about. Yeah, well, unfortunately, the human thousands race... Thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The human race may be extinct Good. by that time. According to Matthew 24, verses 2 and onward, mm -hmm. that is the very reason that Jesus will come back to earth for the second time. Mm -hmm. Because if he did not, mm -hmm. no flesh would be saved alive. Okay, okay let's, let's finish up with this reading that you started. A virus, a vi I'm finished with that, a virus similar to measles in humans may be responsible for the deaths of more than 333 bottlenose dolphins. Ah, they're, they're the cute ones. Along the East Coast this summer. The morbilly virus outbreak extends from coastal areas of New York to North Carolina. More Billy. No, no relation to William H. Morrow, to Billy Morrow. Causing dolphin deaths in numbers not seen since a similar fatal outbreak on the East Coast 26 years ago. Yeah. Since July 1, researchers <coughs> have found 333 dead dolphins on or near shore. Of those deaths, 174 were in Virginia. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration said Tuesday, generally scientists find only about 33 stranded bottlenose dolphins a year. The virus likely will continue killing dolphins as long as there are susceptible animals that can be infected. We don't have a lot of insight into when it will stop. There's no practical way to immunize wild dolphins. <clears throat> so there's little federal, <clears throat> excuse me, wildlife officials can do about yeah. the outbreak. And, and, and plus there are antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria now that they found so. Uh. Other than to monitor it and try to figure out why it's happening and what may have caused it. Based on the behavior of the 1987 outbreak, researchers suspect the virus will spread south as the bottlenose dolphins head to warmer waters for the winter. It likely will last until it has killed off all but those dolphins that have developed and immunity to the virus. What if none of them ever develop an immunity? Like what happened in the uh, the islands visited by the Europeans 
smallpox. In the 1400s and 1500s. Captain Cookie. Captain Cookie Boy. Yeah. The Cookie Monster. He, uh, he brought smallpox. Well, hey, didn't... Syphilis? Th didn't, um, didn't the United States Army put smallpox in, in blankets and, and give it to the Indians? To try to uh, exterminate, off, exterminate the right. Plains Indians? Kill them off, that's right. That's right. And, and the Indians are always depicted as the bad guys in, in old Western movies. Why are the why are the Native Americans always demonized as the bad guys? Isn't that, isn't that strange? The propaganda. Because he who wins writes the history. Right. And okay. what they did was, you know, maybe this mentality stems from Europe. What they did was they pretty much stole every everything they every, every land they invaded. They just pretty much claimed it for their own. They stole. The, the wealth. Yeah, Indians had no idea that you could own land, private property, land. No, because the Indians, uh, uh, the Indian way of the native uh, indigenous people, their, their way of life is to be one with nature and the world. Uh, every, every, you know, to respect everything on the planet. Twenty-four dollars worth of trinkets for Manhattan Island. Well, it wasn't. It, it wasn't yeah. about profit and ownership and capitalism it, it was just about living peacefully you know with the world and its creatures you know uh, harmonizing uh, you know it's not about ownership it's not about greed the 1980s outbreak killed 742 dollars it wasn't until several years later that researchers determined what killed them. Scientists <laughs> used tools developed in a dolphin die-off in the Mediterranean to help determine what killed the bottlenose dolphins in the 1980s. I didn't even know dolphins migrated into the Mediterranean. Hmm. Well, you know, uh, New Zealand has uh, penguins. Yeah, there's there are pet. Well, some parts of New Zealand get chilly. I guess the, the southern. They do, but uh, I guess, but uh, they 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 have their, you know, and penguins that aren't. Uh, hey, sir. That aren't ice lovers. The, the the Galapagos Islands has penguins too that never seen cold weather. They uh, call them jackass penguins. They are cute. Jackasses. They're they're cute little penguins that are tropical penguins. You know, so uh, you know there there are, there's only a certain percentage of the species that lives in Antarctica. Mm. You know, so um, interesting adaptation. Yeah, is well, a funny yeah. thing. Well, some of them like it warm. Some of them like it very cold. <laughs> when it comes to Ant Antarctica. Very cool. Which is a continent, by the way. There's land un under that ice and snow. Unlike the Arctic Circle, where the polar bears are, it's, it's, it's all ocean. Scores. The famous New York Strip Club will open a satellite establishment inside the Trump Taj Mahal Casino. Really? I stood. I stood at the Taj Mahal in Atlantic City. So they're going to open up a a Scores Go Go Bar. Strip clubs. Oh, they call them strip clubs now. Oh no, they they like to call the the classy ones gentlemen's clubs. <laughs> yeah, gentlemen. <laughs> the first strip club inside an Atlantic City casino in 35 years of legal gambling. Really. It will be the most audacious adult offering in an Atlantic City casino. Though it's not the first. Ravel has offered the Royal Jelly Burlesque show since it opened the Borgata Hotel Casino and Spa. Yeah, but that's 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 burlesque. That's like vaudeville. Yeah, it's like it's like vaudeville. It's uh, it's 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 a choreographed show, you know. It's it's not like a strip club where where you don't have to be a 
professional dancer. You do not have to have dancing skills. You just uh, have to look hot and just prance around and, and then bend forward and jiggle your, your silicone fake breasts. You mean like Miley did? Yeah, yeah, and, and, and get your, your propina. And your, twerk? Your gratuities twerked, that way, huh? She twerked also. What's the twerk? Bending over and rubbing against that guy's crotch. Oh, that's what that's, that's called? That's twerking. Twerking? And it is now officially in the Oxford Dictionary. You mean grinding twerking. grinding somebody with your ass? Grinding their pelvic oh, area with your with your gluteus maximus is called twerking? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is it? T-W... T-W-E-R-K-I-N-G. Twerking. Or to twerk. Interesting. Everything... Even that has a name. Anyway, uh, this Borgata Hotel Casino hosts a burlesque show every Thursday night. I call it teasing, not twerking. And dancers in bras and panties are common on gambling floors. Oh. They mean Including they yeah. the Tropicana. Casino. You mean they so walk around? They walk around and do what? And solicit? Try to get you to drink booze, etc. And and sucker you to buy them drinks. That would be nice. Which they don't drink, by the way. So they yeah, they get the they, they get the virgin. That's right. They they charge so they sneakingly I bet the I, I I have a feeling they do this in in uh, in uh, dance uh, whatever you want to call it go go bars. You can mm -hmm. call it anything you want, but when I grew up, there were go go bars. They did the same thing. The girls would t get a break from their 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 shift would be over. I mean, their set. They call it a set. Set, yeah. You know, they dance for so long and then they take a break for so long, and somebody else goes up there, and they walk around and they try to befriend or, or uh, you know, uh, interact with the patrons and uh, they kind of like hint if you want to buy them a that drink. They're available. And they sit down and they talk with you and uh, she gets to drink without the alcohol, without the booze, you get to drink with the booze and you end up paying for two um, Alcoholic no. beverages you get charged for. What's well, a racket? So they're doing the same thing with in uh, in, in Tropicana in Tro and the Showboat Casino. Oh, Tropicana and the Showboat. We feel this is the third leg of the Atlantic City Triangle: gambling, alcohol, and adult entertainment. Since 2006, when the first casino opened in Pennsylvania and began taking away business that had gone to New Jersey. For three decades, Atlantic City has been struggling with new competition popping up all around it. Yeah, and, and plus with the, the crime rate and the, the condition of Atlantic City itself, more people are going to Las Vegas instead. Hey, I have a feeling that the Tropicana might also be a pimp in this situation. Revenue has fallen for other services from 5.2 billion dollars to just over 3 billion last year and thousands okay. of jobs have been lost in a decline that shows no signs of ending in addition to family friendly attractions <laughs> like a revamped steel pier amusement bar oh yeah the, the boardwalk yeah true but they got to keep the vermin off the boardwalk. The return of, of the Miss America pageant and free outdoor lights shows on Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City mm -hmm. has been looking for other ways to separate people from their money. Yeah, that's it's called the uh, that's the salesmanship, that's the snake oil salesman's job, separate you from your money. The Seaside Resort has a century-old reputation as an adult playground. So it may be surprising that it took this long for strippers to make their way inside the gambling halls. Gans 
is investing 25 million in the newest scores, which will open September the 12th, with five private VIP rooms. Private VIP rooms. Please. No regular people allowed. Only VIPs. You have to be a VIP, which means you have to wave enough moolah, mamu, in their face and you automatically become a VIP like the hooker that calls the man very handsome when he's when he's willing to pay her yeah yeah the yeah. VIP rooms are for celebrities and high rollers only yeah the private the so-called private dance which which means anything is negotiable cover charges will range from 10 to 30 dollars what they're charging a cover charge Besides the high price of drinks and besides the money they might spend on the girls? A cover? The club's diamond dollars, which cash-strapped customers can charge to their credit cards. Get the hell out of here. What do they get for, for the cover? Do they get one drink? No drinks. Shame on you, Hall of Shame inductees, <laughs> besides McDonald's and Monsanto. I'll give you this when it's over. Hall of Shame month. inductee yeah, yeah. is the, the Tropicana and the Taj Mahal. Who we blame and Trump? The, yeah, go ahead, and go ahead. Uh, Shobo. And Shobo, all yeah. three of them, inductees in this week's Hall of Shame. Chisler's Hall of Shame. Cover the uh, the diamond dollars they come with a steep twenty percent markup. A hundred dollars worth of club dollars cost you one hundred and twenty bucks. I'll pass. But patrons and employees will have to behave behave you have to behave New Jersey laws governing casinos prohibit total nudity and, and they don't like people touching when they give tips when they give gratuities they call that so stupid it's they call that prostitution that that is more ridiculous than arresting somebody for mar having marijuana on their you know with them or prostitution that, that's not prostitution in approving the club in December 2011, the New Jersey Division of Gaming Enforcement issued a ruling that bordered on an anatomy lesson. Then why are you spending all this money, patrons? Fantasy. Big, the fantasy. Big deal. Big deal, fantasy. You know, so many people are afraid of reality. You'd be surprised how many people are into fantasy and delusion. The whole entertainment industry is based upon avoiding reality. Yeah. Any form of entertainment, you know, whatever. Governing in explicit detail what can be shown. Dancers may strip down only to the G-string well, and yeah. pasties. Unless you're in New York State, then they allow, they allow liquor to be sold with nude Dances. Lap dances are prohibited. No twerking. You mean no twerking in public? Sure. They're private rooms. Yeah, well, you can't do these things in these private rooms. Then what do you do in the New private room? New Jersey law says so. Then what do you do in the private room? Why are you paying this money? Fantasy. That was a duck call from the... Also prohibited is simulated sexual activity. Simulated? It's correct. Which, is, which means it's not real, it's simulated. That's and they don't I, want you to simulate. Wasn't that what Miley was doing the other day? You can't sit... Si simulated. You know what I have to say? To the state of New Jersey and you right-wing, puritanical, fundamentalist, religious nuts that are so anti-sexuality. Oh I have a massive itch in the middle of my forehead. <gasps> B Billy Morrow doesn't condone when I do this, but I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do it. I gotta get going, we gotta get going. Yeah, okay, here. finish up. While Las Vegas is known for its racy offerings, there are no strip clubs inside any Sin City casinos. Because Billy may call before I'm Boy. sitting down here. No, he he knows ten after three. Boy. He knew that before. Remember Joanne Worley from Laughing? Boring. Boring. Anyway, it's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch, and we'll we'll be back with William H. Morrow the third.
our commercial voiceover specialist. Ugh.